This is 2.4.2 practice for modal logic. Um, down at the bottom right of your screen, you'll see uh, 1 through 5. Up top right, you're going to have our, our new rules. And uh, over here on the left, I'm going to be doing the work. So the first one we have, number 1, is ne either necessarily P or necessarily Q. Does that entail possibly P? So I'll write my initial list. Ooh, initial list. Oh, man. My initial list, not about necessarily P or necessarily Q, and then not the case that possibly, uh, possibly P, and all these are in world zero. Oops, there should be a comma right here. All right, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is get rid of my not diamond. I want I like to get rid of all those guys first. So these are the two rules. You just swap the the not diamond to a box not box not p uh, at zero. For some reason my styles is really doing terrible right now. Uh, check check. Um, and then I have a box not rule. I I mean I'm sorry. I have a box. And I can't do anything with that, remember, unless I already have my world related to some other world. I have to have my world I, and I have to have that world I related to some world before I can uh, make any proclamation about that. So I don't have any zero related to anything, so I, I can't use this rule. So instead, I'm going to do this one first. No, uh, notice this is not a box rule at the first. This is an or rule first, right? This is A or B. So my or rule is right here. So I'll apply that right here, and I'll have um, box P at zero, box Q at zero. All right, uh, and then this one is done. Check, and now I have boxes all around. We have boxes all around. At least in uh, the most basic modal logic that we're doing right now, uh, you can't do anything. So I have two open branches, left and right. So this is uh, invalid, and my world, my uh, counter model is going to look incredibly simple though. My set of worlds, W, capital W, is going to be equal to, I have, ah oh, man, this thing is not working well at all, uh, is equal to world zero, good gracious. Uh, this is terrible. I apologize for uh, equipment malfunction. Here we go. World zero, I said. And that's it, right? You don't have any other worlds. You have, you have world zero all the way down. And world zero is not related to any worlds, right? So you're not going to have world zero related to world one or anything like that. And then I don't have any P's or Q's just sitting there by themselves in either of my branches. So in either of my branches do I have P is true or Q is true. I don't have anything like that. Um, so you may wonder, how does this counter model show that this thing is, is invalid? Well, remember what I want to do. I want to be able to say that this is true and this is true, right? The opposite of the conclusion is true. So let's say I have my world. Here's world zero. And in that world, necessarily P or necessarily Q is true. This is, let's say, world zero, right? How is it that I can have necessarily P or necessarily Q true? Well, that's going to mean that either necessarily P is true or necessarily Q is true, possibly both, right? How can I make that? Well, let's say um, necessarily P is true. If necessarily P is true, and my world zero isn't related to any worlds, then necessarily P is, is, is always going to be true, right? Because it's not the case that there's any world that you are related to where P isn't true, right? So P is true in all the worlds where you're related to. That's, that's what necessary P is true means. Same thing with necessarily Q, Q, of course, but that doesn't really matter. So necessarily P or necessarily Q is true here. And then my uh, not the case that possibly P, that turns into necessarily not P. And for the same reason, the same reason that I just said, necessarily not P is going to be true in world zero too. Because there are no worlds in which I'm related to. So there's no world in which it matters that, uh, there's no world in which not P is false, right? So uh, it's the case that necessarily not P. It's a very weird way to look at it, but um, strictly speaking, that, that's what it means. So then, um, th it, are the P's true in zero, or Q's true in zero, or not P true? It doesn't matter, right? As long as world, Z is not, uh, world zero is not related to any other world, 
then necessarily not p is true in that world. Whether or not p is true in zero or p, or, or p is true in zero, it doesn't really matter. So that's how that uh, first counter model shows that number one is invalid. Number two looks like, so p, if p then q, I'm sorry, these are world zeros. And then I want to say not the case that necessarily q at world zero. All right, I, I already know that this is going to be invalid. And the reason I know that is because when I'm looking at this, and these don't have any necessarily, or, and they don't have any boxes or diamonds in front of them, I know that means that these are going to have to be stuck in world zero. And I know this is going to, since it's a not box, it's going to turn into a diamond knot. So I know this is going to have to generate a new world, and in that new world, Q is going to be true or false, right? Q is going to be false, actually. But um, So then I know Q is going to be false in that world, so it won't matter what these things up here say. So I already know this is going to be invalid, but let's get rid of this, this not box first. We'll use this right here, this rule right here first. That not box is going to turn into a diamond knot. Diamond knot Q at world zero, check. And now let's do, well, I guess, yeah, let's do the, the diamond rule here. All right, so this diamond rule, I'm going to have to generate a new world that my world is related to and then say whatever's inside of the diamond is true in that world. So inside of the diamond, I have a not Q, right? My world is zero, so I'm going to have to write a new world. Zero is related to one because I don't have any ones up here, right? So one is a new world. And in one, not Q is true. Right, check. So I have p is true in zero, not q is true in one, and then I have this if p then q. I'm gonna have to use this rule to split them, and I'm gonna have not p in world zero, q in world zero, and if you look up here, not p zero contradicts p zero right here, but q zero doesn't contradict anything, not q at one doesn't contradict anything, p is zero doesn't contradict anything. So this is invalid again. Three invalids, wow. I don't know why that happened. So let's do our counter model. Um, let me counter model in a different color because I can. And I'll say my uh, set of worlds includes two worlds, right? World zero and world one. And notice if, if over here, if the closed branch over here, like where, where they're not, where these two things don't have anything in common, if it said like zero related to two over here, I would not put world two in my counter model over here because that's part of a branch that's closed. Only if it's in the part that they shared, where this branch, you know, only if it's this part of this whole branch over here, would I would I count that? So world zero and world one, and then my relations. The only relations I have is world zero is related to world one, and then I have the truth value. I'll start down here. Like I said in, in class, I like to do alphabetical order and zero, one, two, like, you know, numerical and then alphabetical order. I'm just going to go with the first things I see, so it makes a little bit, hopefully it makes it easier for you. The truth value of Q in world zero. So, the truth value in world zero of Q is one. I have a not Q in one, world one, so... The truth value in world one of Q is zero. And then if I look up further at world zero, I have P is true. So I'm going to say the truth value in world zero of P equals one. And again, that's because of this right up here. So there's my counter model right here. Whenever world zero is related to some new world, world one, and in the original world, Q is true and P is true, but in the new world, Q is false, then you can have if P then Q, P, but not necessarily Q. Or was it? Yeah, not necessarily Q. Wait. Oh, we've only done two. I thought we did three. No wonder. Okay. So we have two invalid so far. Maybe it's not so bad. Hopefully. Hopefully the next one is valid. Let's see. All right. The next one says, necessarily not Q. Does that entail possibly not Q? All right, and again, you may notice that this looks very similar to this rule, right? Necessi oh, I mean the opposite of this rule, I should say. Necessarily not Q. Does that entail not not possi uh, possibly not Q? Is that right? Oh no, it's not even that. 
necessarily not Q, not, okay, yeah, yeah, never mind, it's not like that. Necessarily not Q, does that entail possibly not Q? All right, let's see, this is going to be interesting. Necessarily not Q in world zero, not the case that possibly not Q in world zero. So here are, uh, here's my premise, here's the negation of the conclusion. I have to, uh, I can't do anything with a box, right? I'm gonna have to do something with this not diamond. I'm gonna have to make it a box not, box not not Q at world zero, check. Um, got two boxes, there's nothing you can do about this. This is gonna be invalid, and once again, gosh, once again, the set of worlds is gonna be very basic. World zero, right? World zero, oh. World zero is is uh, in here, and then there's no world related to any world. There's no Q's or P's that are just sitting out there, so that's all you got. There's your counter model right there. We have two more. Hopefully something's valid in here. All right, the next one says necessarily P or necessarily Q at world zero. And then, does that entail necessarily P and Q and world zero? So let's say not necessarily P and Q in world zero. If you hear Guns N' Roses in the background, uh, this is San Clemente, so uh, we like Stefati. It's not me. All right, so I have a, a not box and I have an or rule right here, right? This is A or B, not necessarily P or necessarily Q. It's necessarily P or necessarily Q. So this is an or rule, and this is a, a not box. I'm gonna do the not box first and turn it into a diamond knot, All right? So diamond, not the case, that, mm, that P and Q at world zero. And there's a check right there. So checking out a V. Um, all right, so now I have a diamond. I want to do the diamond rule next because I know it goes straight down. So I'm going to say zero is related to one, and not P. Not the case that both P and Q in world one, right? And you can kind of you well, yeah. Well, there we go. Let's just go ahead and keep moving. So not and is a rule that splits out and the or rule is a rule that splits out so it doesn't really matter what I do here I'm just gonna go to the not and first so not P at world one and or, or uh, not Q at world one check no, and I should have checked this one right so now I have an or uh, this is gonna be ugly I have a, a box or rule so that's gonna look like this box P in world zero, box Q in world zero, and the same thing over here, right? You have to do it on both sides, box P at world zero, box Q at world zero. It's a zero right here, zero right over here. Um, all right, that's what we got so far. And I have my zeros related to one, and down here I have box zeros, all right? So even though it's not box P, at zero and then zero related to one like all nice and neat like that even though the zero related to one is up here since it's on the same branch I'm, uh, I'm good here right so this the worlds I've set up here your world zero is related to your world one in this whole branch so I do have a box and a zero related to one so let's do the first one what would turn into P in world one right? and we're not going to check these boxes remember we're not checking these boxes remember because I know it's not going to happen, but just in case, like later on, I got a zero related to two, I would have to make, I would have to make it uh, P in world two, because this box P uh, means, uh, box P is zero, means every single world that zero is related to, P is true in that world. So if it's zero related to one, zero related to two, P is true in one, and P is true in two. And I happen to know that that's not going to happen, but anyway, but you, you know, you want to do it the same way over and over again, so you, you, uh, become meticulous at uh, the final rules. So box Q at zero, that's gonna turn into Q at one. Again, box P at zero is gonna turn into P at one. 
and box Q at zero is going to turn into Q at one. All right, looking up this chain, P at one and not P one contradict X. Uh, looking up this chain, Q and one, let's see here. Dang it, all right. Q does not contradict anything here. Not P does not contradict anything. So this is an open branch, this is invalid. So that means I'm gonna have to do some work. And I look over here and I have no contradictions over here too. Yeah, on any of these things. So, oh no, wait, Q1 and not Q1, they contradict, but it doesn't really matter. If it's invalid, you gotta do a counter model. Less, oh man, that's supposed to be an X. Let me, uh, there we go. It's supposed to be an X. All right, so counter model. Uh, first we have two worlds, right? We have world zero and world one. If you look, you know, if you look up here, there's just zeros and one. So, oh my gosh, now the baby's crying. This is crazy. So, the sets of uh, world include world zero and world one. Uh, and then world zero is related to world one and that's the only things that those are the only worlds that are related because I have zero related to one in this branch and then my truth values are going to be the truth value in world one of Q is one right there P in world one is going to be zero P equals zero um, is that it? yep that's it that's my counter model right there beautiful all right we have one more left I, I don't know what I was thinking when I wrote these problems but it sure doesn't look like I was too worried about anything being valid all right well let's this last one I just have an entails so I'm just gonna negate the conclusion oh gosh this is gonna be wildly easy okay so it's gonna say not the case oh wait maybe not maybe not not the case that possibly possibly P then possibly P at world zero very important that you see here and I almost missed it myself um, very important that you see here first of all that that's a comma and second of all that this is not you do not put just a not in front of this and then uh, no parentheses that would make this not possibly possibly p then possibly p and that that would it's not right what you want you have a not if then that would just make this an if then with the first thing having a not so um, this is a not if then which is this rule right here and what that's going to say is that you have the first one but you don't have the second one so I'm going to say possibly possibly p at world zero but we have not possibly p at zero. Okay, that's what we've got. And say check. I'm gonna change this uh, diamond, uh, not diamond, to a box knot. Check. Uh, I can uh, have the diamonds over here. Uh, so I'm gonna have to go with the diamond. I can't go with the box. So my rule over here for the diamond is generate a new world and say whatever's in that diamond is true in that world. So now notice uh, whatever is in that diamond is diamond P, right? So I'm gonna have to say diamond P is true in this new world. So my new world is world one. Zero is related to one, and I'm gonna say diamond P in world one. Check. All right. Now. All I have is a box and a diamond, so again I'm gonna to have to do a diamond rule, right? But now I have world one, and world one is gonna to have to be related to some new world. That's what this says, right? Diamond A at world I makes some new world world J that I is related to. So I'm gonna to have to say one is related to some new world two. That should be an R by the way. That's just for the those of you who are freaking out about I, I can understand, I mean, like, this is kind of complicated, so uh, I would be freaking out too. So I have uh, diamond P at 1, 1's related to 2, so P at 2, P at 2, check. 
And now I have to look now. So here's what I got left. I've got this box box rule right here, right? Oh, and I'm, I have all my diamonds done. I have zeros related to one and ones related to two. Now, you might think since zeros related to one and ones related to two, wouldn't it make sense that world zeros related to world two? Yes, but only in some modal logics. Okay, so now normally I would say that's a rule that makes sense, but we just can't assume that, that it's transitive like that, right? So instead, what I have to do is say, every case where I have a box A at world I, and that world I is related to world J, then say A at J. So uh, my, uh, my world I is world zero, right? And the only world that world zero is related to is world one. It's not related to world two. And notice I have a P at two, right? So it, if these, these worlds were related, if zero was related to two, this would be not P at world two, and I'd have a contradiction, and this would be valid. But unfortunately, when I look at this, I have to say zero is related to one, so not P is true in one, but zero is not related to any other worlds, so I can't go any further with this box, right? So now there's nothing else I can do. Not P1 does not contradict with anything up here. P2 does not contradict with anything else up there, and there are no other things up here, so this is invalid again. Five invalids, wow. Oh, so what worlds do we have? Uh, let me change my, my color once again. The worlds I have are twofold. World zero right? and world one. And then world, oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. No, I'm so used to doing that. We have a second world, a third world, I should say, world two. And world zero is related to world one. And world one is related to world two, right? And the truth value at world one of P is zero. Oh, that is ugly. Let me redo that. Truth value at P uh, at one, at world one, is zero because it says not P at world one. Truth value at, at world two of P is one because it's true at world two and then I have nothing else up here so again you may wonder like well how does this counter model make uh, make anything make sense we want to say is it ever the case that it's not true could it ever possibly be not true that possibly possibly if possibly possibly p then possibly p and yes it can um, and here's how if P is false in world one, and it's true in world two, then you're gonna get you're gonna get um, this thing. So how does well you know that may be a little complicated. Maybe I actually explain that in class. Anyway, there's homework. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, sorry that they're all invalid. That might be a little confusing. I haven't changed it. So anyway, see you later.